Hi there, Christopher and uh, Tom. Paul Newsom here from Swim Smooth. Um, quite excited to get this video footage of yourself because it's something which I've been working on personally within my own stroke. Um, and also, as it happens, we were posted up on our uh, Swim Smooth Certified Coaches Facebook page a uh, video clip of an animated swimmer today, which is a direct copy of our Mr. Smooth, if you've seen him. Let's just ping, bring him up here. Well, he's right there in the background, of course. But um, we posted Mr. Smooth out, so invented him, if you like, in 2009. And somebody up on our Facebook page just today has said, hey, check this out. You've got to check out this uh, this complete copy of, uh, of what you guys have been trying to do. Now, this copy, which I'm going to show you in a moment, this is actually Mr. Smooth, our Mr. Smooth. The copy that I'm going to show you in a moment, though, um, does something within, within his stroke, which you do yourself. And it's actually, ironically enough, it's actually quite hard to explain. Uh, but this animation does a beautiful job of it. It's so this animation is trying to to show the perfect stroke, um, but in actual fact, it's doing something which one of our resident physiotherapists said immediately. Uh, this would potentially cause um, bicep tendinopathy. Now, I'd encourage you to go and just uh, Google that biceps uh, tendinopathy. Uh, sorry, bicep tendinopathy. I think I've still probably got it open here um, on one of these tabs. No, maybe not. So just go Google biceps tendinopathy and when we look at your um, bit of information here that, uh, that Tom sent through obviously you have a CSS there of 120 per 100 that's good swimming uh, and you've obviously done pretty well with uh, with swim run as well uh, it's a great sport isn't it it's one which I'm getting into a lot myself anyway let's just have a quick read through this look so physiological movement factors I'm quite flexible compared to many other people I cannot bend my hand inwards a little stiff in shoulders with high elbow but working on that when you say working on that this intrigues me are you trying to get a higher elbow or are you trying to work on the flexibility and um, I do rehab training for swimmers three to four times a week to get a stronger body and that's all good stuff of course we've got to make sure we're doing the right stuff though of course so injuries dislocated right shoulder 12 years ago overworked left shoulder 2016 pain as a result of swimming with straight arms and paddles a lot during swim run I think now certainly swimming with um, paddles on uh, and straight arms will definitely aggravate the shoulder which is not a great thing to do um, but my belief is it's something a little bit more um, intricate than that within your stroke and something which we can work on swim background started swimming as young and I was 14 15 trying twice a day national level team that's great quit when I was 18 haven't swum for about 14 years now when you quit one of the good things about being a good swimmer having a good strong swimming background is that you can pick it back up again no problem you recognize and remember how to do the stroke that sort of stuff never leaves you what does leave you though is some of the muscular stabilization especially in the stabilization of the uh, the shoulder shoulder girdle um, so the rotator cuff muscles basically as you um, weaken in this area you know the classic thing is you might go to the gym and strengthen the larger muscle groups up but it's these smaller muscle groups the stabilizing muscle groups which can be uh, a little bit on the uh, problematic side. So you haven't swum for about 14 years, so potentially we need to do some rehab work to uh, regain that stabilization. Started again swimming once two swimming workouts a week uh, in 2015 during winter, spring, good stuff. Ambitions, would love to do an Ironman swim under 50 minutes. I definitely think you're capable of that uh, with the right weather conditions. Would enjoy competing again uh, without an ashamed PB in the National Masters in 400 and 100, 200 butterfly now it's interesting that you're into butterfly because again what I'm going to show you in a moment is all related uh, to the way the shoulder moves and uh, how it could be moving better I also like to become a stronger swimmer with paddles as I can be an even stronger competitor at swim run in Sweden now you've given us here your um, your ramp test so let's just take a closer look in at that uh, what we've got, so we've got some pretty quick times, of course. The slowest time you've done there is 40 seconds for 50 meters. Um, we see this zone here where you're taking 34 strokes per length, and the time comes down from 36 to 30, goes up to 37 actually, and then comes down to 35. Beyond this point, we're starting to actually work quite hard and also starting to take uh, quite a few more strokes there as well without really gaining too much in terms of speed. We're looking at this here at around about 70 strokes per minute, but in the video footage that you've sent through, um, especially on the steady stuff, the, the view from the front, let's just bring this up here. Here we go. 
stroke rate in this shot is very much slower than 70 strokes per minute possibly around about 55, 56 strokes per minute and what I want you to look at is how deliberate the stroke looks now when you're being filmed nobody wants to end up with a bad image of themselves so when we get filmed we try a little bit harder to be a little bit more perfect and this is why I was so interested and excited to receive this video footage because as I mentioned I've been working through some of these issues myself just recently I've always had the precursor to um, some shoulder discomfort on my left hand side and just in the last 12 to 18 months that started to become a lot worse and because I'm not very fit particularly for swimming uh, certainly compared to I have been in previous years the tendency is to slow things down a little bit too much maybe focus a little bit too much on technique work and like you're doing in this video footage here it appears that I've been trying to over exaggerate really good technique and what I mean by that is you can see this happening straight here look as we zoom into the video footage what we see with the left arm is picture perfect it's exactly what we want to see 100 to 120 degrees at the elbow 107 spot on you're also exhaling nicely underneath the water but watch what happens when this right hand comes in look it comes in the hand turns out the way now when the hand does this this is a very classic smooth thing to do so of our six swim types I definitely classify you in the smooth category now smooths don't have many faults of course but this is one of those things now when the hand turns out like so you can see what it's doing to the elbow it's actually pushing the elbow inward and also the shoulder here as well making things a little bit uncomfortable now this is on the right hand side of course and yeah that shoulder just there we go it's sort of been pushed internally you'll notice of course it's quite obvious here in fact how the left leg kicks out wide to stabilize for what the right arm is doing there now you can appreciate that there's quite a bit of drag between here and here so not something you want to be doing but it's this movement here look at the shoulder this internal movement how that shoulder is sort of popping forwards whoops popping forwards that causes me con some concern and this I believe is exactly what's been causing my issues with the shoulder um, is a try you know sort of trying to just take things a bit easy lengthen out I always flare up more so when I'm doing a technique session ironically enough than when I'm doing a harder red mist or threshold session and I can only think that I've been trying to over exaggerate that now here comes this little animation that I was talking about at the start check this out so one of our coaches has sent this across saying hey look who do you think they're trying to copy I've shown you Mr. Smooth but what's different about Mr. Smooth one of our early coaches said hey look this is you've got Mr. Smooth but this guy is Mr. Jerky and obviously trying to be <laughs> a little bit derogatory about this what he means by that is it's not smooth at all look how it's very much sort of stop and start and look at how he does exactly what we've just been talking about with your shoulder coming into the water here look so the left hand comes in that hand turns out exactly as we saw with your stroke and this shoulder here Christopher ends up getting sort of popped in so it's pushing in same on this side in fact look at that you can really see the crease on the shoulder so the resident physio uh, Yana it's, it immediately popped up and said ah oh, bicep tendinopathy so this is basically irritation on the anterior aspect the front aspect of the shoulder here it's exactly where I get the pain it even radiates down into my pec a little bit so when you extend forwards and try to make it longer especially when you've got flexibility as you claim that you've got reasonable flexibility but you haven't got the stabilization potentially to draw the shoulder back then that's when we get into issues and this is one of the paradoxes of freestyle swimming we want that long smooth stroke of course but as we talk about and I have talked about at length at swim smooth it doesn't want to be too long if it becomes too long we're essentially over gliding now over gliding is bad news for the uh, for the stroke itself let me just bring on a, a guy here over gliding where we're trying to take as few strokes as we possibly can is a bad thing because we end up getting to a point where we're simply stalling in the water and not traveling forwards this is my classic over glider Scott here 
Now his stroke rate in this video footage is only 33 strokes per minute. To the naked and untrained eye, it actually looks fairly smooth. But from the surface, we'll see how he actually stalls with that left hand look and waits for the other hand to catch it up. When you look at it from underneath the water, here he is. You can really see how it stop and start. Very jaggedy or jerky. Just like this guy here, look. He completely stops for a moment in time. In fact, let's just time that watch. So the hand reaches full extension here. Now, if we assume that this is at swimming speed, this stop up here is accurate to one one thousandth of a second. So at 0.68, if that reaches here, 0.6. That arm doesn't actually start to do anything really for his stroke look for about 0.6 or 0.7 of a second before it starts to pull through. Now that's less than a second that he's stalling for, but it's still time where the shoulder is put in this awkward position with the hand out in front and the shoulder is being pushed inwards, creating that bit of irritation. Now my belief is this is exactly what's going on with your stroke. So let's take a, another look at that. So we swim towards the camera. We try very, very hard, especially with the right arm, to get the stroke long. But look at how that shoulder pops forward. Look at how the legs respond by scissor kicking apart. And look at how that hand stalls and then pushes straight down. So when we think about this idea of why you might not be swimming as good with um, paddles, especially, if you think about it, those paddles are going to really irritate the shoulder because we're increasing the surface area of the palm of the hand here. We're spending a lot of time just pushing straight down towards the bottom of the pool and that's very much causing that uh, causing that irritation. So Mr. Jerky, the animation which has copied uh, Mr. Smooth, albeit incredibly badly, is not great. And when we look at it from underneath the water here, look, we also see how that hand snaps back and we end up closing up this angle terribly. That hand is way too close underneath the body, creating quite a lot of, um, obviously the body as it cuts through the water it creates turbulence around that turbulence, around the body line, there's that turbulent line. The last thing you want to do is have your hand pulling back close towards the body. You close down the angle at the elbow here and we don't get the leverage out of the shoulder, the pecs and the lats that we'd need. So this is just an awkwardly comp you know, compressed image here where the shoulders are really put under a lot of stress right in here. And that's where you've been experiencing that little bit of pain yourself. So let's take a, um, a closer look in. And of course, the question we want to be asking ourselves is how do we correct this? Well, go back to what you're saying about um, what you've been working on with the high elbows. You have clearly got a high elbow recovery. This is classic smooth stuff. The danger is here though, Christopher, that over the surface of the water, this might look nice in the pool, but you're doing swim run and the last place you're gonna swim when you're competing is in a pool. You're gonna be swimming in the wilds of the open water, mate. Now, over the top of the water here, this is double Olympic gold medalist Rebecca Adlington, pure pool swimmer. Look at that. You and her, carbon copy of each other. I said pretty nice uh, compliment to be looking as good as Rebecca Adlington, former world record holder in the 800 freestyle. But the point is that she is a pool swimmer. Look at how the fingertips only just trail over the surface of the water. In fact, yours on this left-hand side actually just clip there the surface of the water. So, yes, it looks nice, but... If we just trade Rebecca Adlington now for the world's best ever triathlete, Alistair Brownlee, double Olympic gold medalist in triathlon, watch what he does. Very different. He brings his arm more up and over, a much more open angle at the elbow. This gives him clearance over the surface of the water and also reduces the stress and fatigue that a lot of people feel with a wetsuit on because he's not working against the suit. If you were to try to swim with this high elbow recovery, as nice as it looks here, guess what? Those shoulders are just gonna blow out even more so because you're working against something which is 
and you know as flexible as the the world's best suits are these days it's still much less flexible and not wearing anything around the shoulders at all if you look in second place olympic silver medalist jonathan brownlee almost like a straight arm windmill these guys don't look anywhere near as nice as you christopher but i bet you'd love to have the sort of css paces that these guys hold and obviously to compete at the same sort of level so these guys are the true champions for open water swimming we call this style of stroke the swinger style and you can probably see why the arm swings up and over interesting enough in third place here is Harry Wiltshire. Harry Wiltshire is the very first swimmer I ever started coaching way back in around about 1999-2000 when I saw him swimming I thought whoa he's throwing his arms over Harry needs to swim a little bit more like what you're doing here. We tried that, it actually slowed him down. I'm very pleased to say in October last year, Harry was the very first professional out of the water at the Kona Ironman World Championships. Here he is right here. His stroke style and recovery over the top looks completely different to yourself. Now I'm sure you're looking at that right now and thinking, uh, I'm not so sure about this. What's this guy telling me? That big windmill arm action over the top of the water doesn't look anywhere near as relaxed and as comfortable as yourself. But Harry's wearing a wetsuit. He's opening out the angle because he swims in rough, choppy water and to reduce stress off the shoulder. Now, I'm not suggesting you need to copy that completely, but my recommendation over the top of the water here certainly would be to open out this angle and get a little bit more clearance at least with that hand over the surface of the water there. We've got a, um, a drill. Let's just bring this drill up here so you can see this. This just happens to be a little bit of uh, side on swimming of myself doing what we call the javelin drill. But the point I want to show you here is what I'm doing on the recovery is almost like a halfway house. It's a compromise between the very straight arm swing of Harry Wiltshire and the high elbow that you've got. Still looks nice, look, but I'm getting clearance and I'm not putting my shoulder under quite so much stress as what you're probably experiencing there. Especially, like you say, because you've been out of the water for 14 years. Some of that flexibility that you would have had as a kid is certainly not there. And certainly, excuse me. And certainly some of the uh, stabilization in the shoulder won't be there either. Now, head position is fantastic. You got to take a breath in, one eye in the water, one eye out. I can't fault it at all. In fact, it's a very nice looking freestyle swim stroke. Now, you probably look at this and thinking, geez, you know, I thought my legs might be a bit higher than that underneath the water. But this goes right back to what we saw from that front shot. Look, the hand comes in. Look at how it turns out. Look at how it spends so much time pushing down on the water before it pushes back. So this position right now is very good. But from there to there, all you've really done is lifted yourself up at the top, sunk the legs down at the pack, back, but more importantly, you've lost the propulsion to drive you forwards and it happens on every single stroke. This is absolutely classic smooth stuff. So when whenever I see somebody who has that swimming background like you have, the first thing I see is this hand stretching out. You're trying to get that extra five, six, seven centimeters underneath the water, but it's not helping your stroke at all. It's popping that shoulder forward. It's irritating the shoulder joints. And most importantly, for your speed, it's numbing that speed because we end up getting this bit of an overglide happening up at the front end of the stroke and that, that massive push down, push down. So your shoulder is in a vulnerable position. You've internally rotated. You've pushed that shoulder in towards the chin here, look. And then you're applying downward pressure all the while just purely putting that straight, stress and strain right on the shoulder joint there. So when we come back to uh, what you just said here, look, so uh, injuries, dislocated right shoulder 12 years ago, overworked left shoulder. Well, interesting enough, it's the right one that tends to do this the worst, but equally you can still see you doing that on the left-hand side as well. Pain is result with swimming with straight arms and paddles uh, a lot during swim run. So the ironic thing is you don't actually swim with straight arms at all. What I mean by straight arm is even at this point, that elbow would still be completely open at 180 degrees. In actual fact, midway through the catch, things actually look really quite good there, Christopher. It's just this part here. You are trying too hard to be too long and putting way too much stress on that shoulder. Applying the brakes here, look, we've got the surface of the water here. You'd look at this and probably think, oh, my elbow's dropping low. It's not dropping low at all. 
your elbows actually at a very good height. You've got nice high elbows here. The deck problem is that hand is reaching up towards the surface. We ran a very successful blog a few years ago um, looking at Michael Phelps and talking about this notion of does Michael Phelps have a high elbow or does he have a deep hand? Look at this here. Look. Now this sort of guy, given your background, should be your ultimate role model. He looks long and smooth from the surface but look he doesn't achieve it in the same way that you're doing. Elbow is here, wrist is here, come on, there we go, palm is there and then we join up just here. So we get this position where the elbow does appear to be higher but it's no higher than your elbow, the difference is he's spearing deeper and look he does that on every single stroke. He doesn't reach up and be greedy to try and get those extra five, six, seven centimeters that you're trying to do here. He realizes that by doing that, it will put stress and strain on the shoulders. And more importantly, this action here will be blocking him and slowing him down. Now, the footage that you sent across here, this is 100 meters, easy, easy, moderate, fast, easy. Well, let's look at what the fast looks like. This is 25 meters of fast swimming now. Really, nothing changes up at the front. We've still got that long reach, that long push down. Here's the left shoulder. This is the one that you're currently experiencing issues with, and it's doing exactly the same thing. The elbow's turning in, and look what you're doing with the legs. So when you swim fast, really, you're just kicking harder and trying to push yourself through the dead spot at the front end of the stroke. Now, this sounds like I'm being very critical, but I'm quite passionate about this, as you can probably tell. In fact, let's just leave it on that shot there. Boom. Very passionate about this because I have been experiencing some of this issue myself. I mentioned I've had time out of the water. I'm not very, very fit at the moment. I'm trying to do the right technique, but in the process of trying to be perfect, ironically enough, I believe I've actually irritated my shoulder. So in the last couple of weeks, what I've been doing is first and foremost, these are my take home points for yourself. A, don't change too much. You're doing good, you're swimming well, CSS of 120 per 100, that already puts you in the top 5 or 10% of, of, uh, of all swimmers I would take for a session. But here, you want to be reaching and spearing into the water. You're not going to like this initially, because when you do that, you're going to feel immediately like you've shortened up your stroke. But that's exactly what I want you to feel like. I want you to feel like you're not being greedy. Now, the second thing is, we can still reach forwards. Let's look at this video clip. We can still reach forwards doing a drill such as the side kicking exercise here. Let's zoom in. So this is me doing this exercise when my shoulders were feeling pretty good. And I'll explain why. There, there, and there. Now, my arm is fully extended. I can't reach any further forwards. In fact, I could maybe be greedy and get an extra couple of centimeters, and the way I do that is I'd have to shove the head of my shoulder forwards. Now, that might gain me a couple of a couple of extra centimeters, but what it's going to do is it's going to cause impingement and pain right on the top of the shoulder because I haven't got the stability in that shoulder to actually draw it back. So this is the paradox with freestyle swimming. We are trying to extend forwards, but at the same time, in this region here, we're trying to draw back. We're trying to make sure the shoulder doesn't pop too far forwards. Now, elite swimmers can do this action. They can extend forward. They can allow that shoulder to, to travel a bit further forwards. But the difference between you and me and an elite swimmer is the fact that the elite swimmer has incredible levels of flexibility and they'll have been in the gym doing a lot of stabilization work and the stabilization work that I'm just going to talk you through in a moment is obviously gaining a lot of popularity you know swimmers are doing rehab programs to pre be preventative about shoulder pain and this is exactly what you'd want to be working on so we need to spear in deeper look at this position here you can do this psychic exercise and just to show you just in case you feel like this is too weird and you're not quite sure if it's going to work do this side kicking exercise and then halfway down the pool go into the position that you're in where that hand is reaching up and also where this hand is actually turned out and immediately guarantee it you'll feel the pressure and pain on the shoulder where you, where you are experiencing it at the moment. So side kicking is very very good and one of the other exercises that you can do to uh, uh, complement this in the water is just a little bit of sculling. 
I use sculling and the psychic exercise for a variety of different reasons, but this one's good. You will only travel forwards doing sculling with the pull boy between your legs if your fingertips are deeper than the wrist and the wrist is deeper than the elbow, just like I am here. Look, I'm reaching deep. This is what we need to do. We don't want to go too deep, otherwise lose the catch completely, but re reaching up as you're doing here is certainly not helping things one iota. Now, what you're doing is this. So I'm moving forwards because my fingertips are down, but let's try and copy what you're doing. The elbow drops, my fingertips come up. In actual fact, the elbow isn't really any lower than what it was beforehand. The difference, as we'll see here, look, the elbow doesn't really move at all. The difference is that the fingertips come up towards the surface. We get that blocking effect, almost like I'm waving at the camera. And that stop sign, which I have right there, is exactly the same as the stop sign that you've got here. This is not good for your forward progress in the water and certainly not good for the shoulders either. So keeping the fingertips down is imperative. Sculling will teach you to find where that spot is so you don't go too deep and equally don't drift back up towards the surface like you're doing here. And then from there, we can then go freestyle to the end of the pool. I think there's just a couple of strokes in here, look. I feel myself about to start swimming. Here we go. Boom. Now, I'm in good shape in this video clip, <laughs> and what I mean by that is I'm in good swimming shape. I'm able to extend forwards, but because I've got control and been swimming quite a bit on this video, this was filmed about three or four years ago, I'm reaching forwards here, but at the same time, I'm actually drawing my shoulder blades together and back. So I'm not going to the end range, and it's the end range that you're experiencing here, which is almost, if you imagine the the uh, structures within the shoulder banging against each other and creating that bit of inflammation. So how do you stop this? Well, a physio might, um, you know, a physio who's not focused on swimming might say, oh, you know what, Christopher, you need to take some time out of the water, rest and ice and all these sort of things, and then you'll be good. And you come back in two weeks' time, and you start swimming again, and you have exactly the same issue. That's what's been happening to my, uh, been happening to myself. Now, had I taken the advice <laughs> of my uh, wife, who's a physiotherapist and a shoulder specialist, she's always on at me about improving the stabilization in the muscles at the back of the shoulder here, getting the ability to draw back. And because I spend a lot of time these days at a computer hunched over, you know, my natural posture is more of a rounded position. But this is terrible for freestyle swimming. The muscles at the front of the shoulder, the pecs, and, uh, the pecs uh, become very, very tightened. The anterior aspect of the shoulder becomes shortened and we hunch over. It's exactly the opposite of what I'm asking you to try to do. So what I want you to do is I'll send you a link uh, to within our swimsmooth.guru which has a, re uh, a range of exercises to work on the external rotation of the shoulder joint to basically help you to build up the muscles behind here. And we're not talking big Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles, we're talking uh, stabilization muscles. These are exercises that you can do with what we call a TheraBand, like a stretchy cord, and they'll just help to sort of get those finer muscles being able to stabilize the shoulder and if you do that in combination with spearing a bit deeper and making sure we're not trying to be too greedy pushing that shoulder forwards then I absolutely guarantee your shoulders both of them will start to come good how do I know that well I feel like I've struck rich I've struck rich I've struck lucky I've struck gold the jackpot whatever you want to call it in the last two weeks um, I, I've, I've done made these exact same changes myself and I'm now swimming without pain in the shoulder I'm not swimming very quick at the moment and it's purely you know because I haven't been in the water too much but I am getting there I'm getting out of the sessions I'm enjoying the sessions, I'm motivated, I'm feeling good about my swimming for the first time in a long, long time because I haven't got that pain there. And I think for yourself, this is going to be absolutely key. Now, of course, you're not just interested in reducing pain, you're interested in getting quicker as well. But the more look, this is a brilliant shot. I'm assuming Tom's taken this. Well done if you have, Tom. Look at that. The level of flexibility there at the elbow popping in like this, that hand turning out, but you've got to worry, you've got to think about how much stress and strain that's intern that internal rotation at the shoulder joint is putting on the shoulder. Same on this side as well. Look, this is classic smooth stuff. And look at those legs. Look at how those legs open up like a parachute. And it's all because of this. Usually this parachute is created by someone crossing over in front of the head. You're not doing that. You're actually doing the opposite. But it's still having the same effect. It's instability here at the front 
requiring balance and stabilization at the back but the more you do that the more it's going to slow you down okay the more it's going to drag you back now I say this all quite strongly and quite passionately Christopher because I believe you're actually a very very good swimmer I can see that it would just be fantastic if you can make some of these changes that I'm suggesting in fact all of these changes that I'm suggesting so to spear deeper to not have the hand turned out let's just bring Rebecca Adlington in look so another poster child but doing something and she jumps in watch this this is somebody who is super smooth, but she's not being greedy. So she's got the high elbow recovery that we talked about beforehand. She's a pure pool swimmer. You'd benefit from opening out that angle out the elbow a little bit. But it's this angle I want you to see here, Christopher. Look. From the top. Here. Look. You're reaching forward, so is she. She always keeps that fingertip, middle finger, pointing forwards, and she doesn't delay in that position. She's bending the elbow and pressing back. Again, same thing here. Look, it almost looked, in fact, it almost looked like she was going to turn her hand out, and then watch what she does. Look, she turns the fingertips in to basically hug the water and then press the water back behind her. And when you view it from this position, she's not allowing that shoulder to knock forwards up against her chin. She's tipping those fingertips down. The hand is turned in, it's not turned out. She's not putting the brakes on. And boom. She's traveling here at 1 minute 12 per 100 warm up pace. You're traveling 120 at full bore CSS threshold pace. And the only change you're going to need to make, apart from keeping on with those hard swim sessions that Tom's putting you through, is to try and correct what's happening up at the front. You're trying to be too smooth. I know it sounds crazy for me to say that, but look, those hands almost catch each other up. And then just like Mr. Jerky, let's bring him back in. He's got the same thing. Look, he's forcing that elbow too high. It looks so awkward on the shoulders. Terrible stuff. And that shoulder just doing exactly what your shoulders are doing. The only difference, the only saving grace in what we see in this animation is the fact that he doesn't turn the hand out anywhere near as much as what you do. But there is still an element of that, of course. That hand turns out and that shoulder pops in. It's just not as pronounced. Okay, so don't be Mr. Jerky. Definitely, please, don't be Mr. Jerky. Be Mr. Smooth. Just with a couple of those refinements, as I suggested. Here he is, look. He's not greedy, he stretches forwards, but look at where he spears to. He spears down, fingertips are down, and he presses that water back behind him. All right, Christopher, I hope that's been useful for you. A couple of drills for you to try. I would love for you to keep me posted with this and let me know if, um, let me know if uh, the adjustments you're making that I'm suggesting are having a bit of an impact. I am sure they will. Good luck. Catch you later.